We're we gotta games? get more tomatoes directing. <laughs> more tomatoes directing the open door film project. Welcome to the backpack show, everybody. How so are you? excited. We're back. Your mom is here. Your mom's here. Oh, you mean my mom's here. Your mom's. Hello, my mom. Hello, my dad. Hi, Coach Woodard out in California as well. Uh, our guests are West Coast today. So, I, you know, anyone who's on the other coast, please make sure you say so because they'll feel um, equally sad to be awake this early in the morning to be on a really dumb internet video show. Well, we've talked to a number of people in the entertainment is industry on the Backpack Show, stage, screen, TV, movies, all different types. And we've heard a lot of the same things, that there's a lack of representation in one way or another. We don't have enough women. We don't have enough people of color. We don't have enough people from the LGBTQIA community. Like, There's just so many people not adequately represented in the entertainment things that we consume. So I went looking actually for an initiative that was bringing more women into film. And what I found instead was the Open Door Film Project, which is working to bring more of all of those different types of people into the film industry at all levels. So I'm very excited to have them with us today. Come right in through this open door as we explore film. Hi everyone, Tim Kitzer from NBA Jam and NFL Blitz, welcoming you to The Backpack Show, your hosts, Chris Brogan, Kerry Gargone, Boom Shakalaka. Backpack Show. There's five of us today, if you count I Chris know, and I. It's a, it's a <laughs> packed backpack show, I'm backpack excited. rackers. I'll get rid of our banner. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to grab everybody. There's Leslie. Joe Jaffe points out that Chloe. Periscope is still real. Like, you know, you can watch this on Periscope. Even oh, nice. Thank you, Joe Jaffe. So Chloe is so lovely. I just started DJing a show on villageradio.net classic alternative worldwide and she made me like little custom social graphics and stuff and updated my website and everything so so cool hi elizabeth look at everybody here and deb is here kate's here good morning kate all right listen let's bring the whole gang out here we've got steve deering we've got Derek williams we've got anna levine hey hello Hello. and how are you welcome to the show hello hey good good to be here Uh, thanks for having us open door film project now It sounds like the kind of thing that you make maybe, I don't know, when a pandemic starts or something. But what was the timing? (laughs) What makes you decide, I think I'm going to make one of these and and talk a little bit about the the genesis of this project? Um, It it came about because I went to a um, I went to a film festival. It was a it was a mostly African-American film festival. And I was talking with people and I just felt this inability to get past a certain level people had this inability to get past this certain level so i figured i'd do something about it um my background is in film i I work with like a lot of the uh major studios and stuff but i put this together uh and just wanted to help as many people as i can um I, I went searching online to try and find how to how to do this what do i want and i saw this website called uh dust and I fell in love with it and it motivated me so much. Then I got hired at this company called Gunpowder and Sky. <laughs> and um, come to find out that they are the makers of dust. You know? No so way. Now- Wait, what? I hate dust. <laughs> no, dust is <laughs> this great. Me sneeze you- all the time. <laughs> dust is this great YouTube yeah, channel. Dust. These awesome sci fi shorts and things. Oh, well, that's different. Really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. So I get there and I find out there, oh, this, is, this is the company I'm, you know, salivating over and uh they said yeah the people that actually do it are right there and i'm like you gotta be kidding me so i went over there like i met denzel or something you know and it was anna <laughs> and that's how anna so anna's started. your personal denzel is that what you're trying to get at yep. here <laughs> oh my golly so were you, are you planning to be an equalizer three anna yes, or is. you know i mean i'm not gonna say i'm not but right but i'm not <laughs> haven't seen you in the same room as him i guess that would uh that would kind of lend to that it's true am i denzel i might be denzel <laughs> so i know what dust is and and anybody who hasn't seen it, it it's to me the first few times i watched it i felt like i was watching something like neil blomkamp put together like it's got that very much super real feeling sci-fi that is it's amazing just to think the budget that 
little budget that went on and just the, the, the production to make something like that happen. These are all seeds for bigger things. So is that what the open door film project ends up being is like seeds for bigger things. So when you make these eight little bits, exactly. it's going to let people know, man, we can do more if you wanted. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. This um, we're doing a, the anthology that we're putting together and uh, creating a feature film out of will uh, display the talents of eight directors that we've selected. Uh, we've already selected them and they're ready to go. They're really good. And it's more of a calling card for the company. We already have multiple scripts uh, in the pipeline and we've tied, we're connecting with executive producers and production companies that uh, may want to work with us in producing these films. Elizabeth had a question. I'm so sorry. You go ahead, Anna, and then I'll ask Elizabeth's question. Uh, and and some of the the shorts that are part of the anthology also do do sort of serve as seeds for for larger things. So some of them can be expanded into feature length themselves. Um, so you know it's sort of a proof of concept. Um, they they work as proof of concept as well. Elizabeth was asking, does this project help people get into all aspects of film, like animation, production, screenwriting? Yeah, I mean we we left it open. You know, we we want. We wanted our filmmakers um, to sort of be open to to do you know whatever medium they wanted. Um, right now, everything is live action, um, but but the door the door was open uh, for for them to do animation or or um, lean into you know if they wanted something that's that's more you know heavy CGI sci fi or if they wanted to to lean into different genres you know as long as it was in the genre space the sci fi horror fantasy space that was kind of our our only um, caveat but but yeah uh but they they were able to bring in you know we're bringing in screenwriters um in some cases it's the directors um and yeah it's just it's for everyone so one day steve is at um a stump town coffee because he's just so sick of starbucks and there he is and he's ordering and he's having a bit of argument because they didn't put oat milk and then someone put a black bag over his head and threw him in a van and then he showed up at the Open Door Film Project. Steve, what do you do there? Oh, that's pretty accurate in terms of how it went down. <laughs> it really um, is. <laughs> yeah, I'm the head of development. I assist Anna with just kind of like ushering all these projects to completion. Um, building off the last question and what she said, you know, we are interested in all kinds of projects, de developing all kinds of films. Uh, we actually have a submission um area on our website for people that, you know, want to pitch projects to us, things of that nature. And, you know, I work with the directors, I work with Anna, we kind of flesh out what their vision is, try to, for this particular project, the anthology, try to maintain their specific vision while also fitting it into this larger anthology and trying to interconnect everything with a similar theme. So it feels like a cohesive whole. And a lot of our directors have, you know, wildly different styles and visions. So it was, you know, quite the quite the challenge to weave all this together, but I think we really came up with something special. It was amazing. Um, uh, when I when I told them what I wanted to do, they were like, "I don't know how we're gonna," because like I wanted to make short just these eight short films. It was started out ten. I wanted to just make these uh, short films, and they were like, "Well, let's do something that we can potentially sell." And I'm like, "Okay." So we figured we needed something that would have a cohesive string but we couldn't figure out what it was. And then one of our directors had a story that they were using for theirs that we said, hey, let's just use this. So it kind of fell together. Were there any pieces that you felt like, well, I'm not sure how this is gonna kind of go with the rest, but then once you had them all together, there were elements that emerged? Uh, so the the framework story kind of made it so that we're we're able to place them in in sort of the perfect way. Um, the The framework of it is sort of following an emotion uh, an emotional arc um, or many emotions. And so, so each, you know, each short kind of has an emotion that goes with it. And, and yeah. that kind of is, a, is the, is how we're able to do the thematic tie with all of them. Yeah. So when you say emotion, it's, what's, how many emotions are we talking about? Just the big ones, like <laughs> happiness, anger, love, or do you get through to like mild annoyance, <laughs> slight disappointment, you know? <laughs> Like when they get your order wrong at the at the Stumps Coffee. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's more the the big emotions, you know, fear and and anxiety and um and and happiness and joy and you know the that kind of stuff. But but I mean 
eight of them. So you do then have to sort of pull. Mild annoyance doesn't happen to be one of them, but you know, thinking about it, maybe. Hey, it's universally relatable. <laughs> So how does this translate into opening doors for people throughout the industry? Like, are you collaborating with people on these projects, making them part of the festival? Is there a bigger networking effort kind of that's happening? Like, what does this look like as far as you're kind of growing your army to bring more representation into film? How are you recruiting? I mean, you know, it all obviously starts from from the top down and, and just sort of building uh, building our, our team. Um, we've really made sure to have a very uh, inclusive group of people. So, you know, we, we have a lot of, um, a lot of diversity on our, on our core team, but then also as we were choosing our filmmakers, we made sure to, that, that it really was an inclusive group of filmmakers. Um, uh, the, the majority of them are actually female, um, but they're, uh, it's an amazing group of, of filmmakers. And then the crews that we're going to bring on, we're also going to be making sure that there is, is a lot of inclusion and diversity on that part as well. So, so really, you know, from, from the, the top down, everything, you know, everything is, is as inclusive as we can make it. Chloe loves that people can just submit their script directly to you, that there's no like gatekeepers blocking them. And Elizabeth thinks the same. So that's it. Get your scripts in. I mean, it's, it's how uh, the, the old Star Trek used to work. You know, they, you could just open submit uh, stuff. So, you know, going by that model, it's a good model. It is a good model. And it's interesting what it surfaced because one person wanted to ask the question, can you date a ghost? Another person wanted to say, you know, what is it like for a couple that has to, you know, confront gender transition? So you've really hit some interesting depth in, in trying to go for these shorts. Shorts are by nature tricky, right? Like, you know, there's all, is it Twain that said I, I would have written a shorter letter, but I didn't have time. So I had to write a longer one. And it's just that sort of feeling of like, you know, to, to make something succinct is so much harder than when you get an hour and 20 or more runtime. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, I've played some of our um, short films for some of our friends, like at parties and stuff. And uh, the feedback is incredible because the some of the, all of our directors, like when people watch their films, they get pull, so pulled in and they touch so many like specific veins that just don't get hit. So um, I'm really amazed at our, our, our filmmakers. Do you ever feel like, how did I get included in this group? Like everybody here is doing such cool things. Yeah. I've def I could definitely see being like, oh, I should have done something cooler before I showed up for this. <laughs> <laughs> like hero yeah. worship happening here. Well, yeah. it's it's it is challenging because the directors are so talented, you know. So you come in there and um, they each have really unique visions. And they work in multiple genres and kind of, you know, getting back on how they all were interwoven together. Everybody's coming from a different genre. Somebody's coming from horror, somebody's coming from science fiction, somebody's coming from maybe uh, fantasy realism with just like human centric focus. And in order to make it all work, we realized that we had to play to the strengths of, you know, not just their diversity as filmmakers, but the diversity of the stories they're telling. So, you know, for the horror one, obviously, it came through strong as, fe as fear. For the drama one, there's themes of love. And we started being like, how do we weave all this together? So we came up with this idea for the anthology. You know, a lot of our other projects are touching on different genres and have their own thing going on. Before the anthology, we came up with this idea of, okay, what if there was like a science fiction story about, you know, um, an artificial intelligence entity that kidnaps somebody as an experimenting them in terms of trying to study human emotion. And we wove it all through this story of, okay, each of these are vignettes exploring human emotion in a larger tale. And that mostly just came out of the directors uh, being so strong in what they individually do, you know, horror, science fiction, fantasy. It's a very mixed group and all of them have some extreme talents. So yeah, it is pretty intimidating to work with them sometimes, but in a very fun and challenging way. Elizabeth yeah. wants to hero worship us. That's not allowed. Uh, <laughs> I was for it. Go hero worship now. <laughs> you would be. Um, listen, we have to do a couple ads, so we got to sneak you back. But before anyone runs away because I said the word ads, I've got a I've got a little video intro for your Kickstarter project. I've got lots of questions. I want to know all about the cyberpunk project that Nuin brought to this thing. I want. I have so much to ask. So I'm going to stick you all backstage. It means you get a chance to grab a beverage or something. Boop. It means boop, you get to triple boop. boop. 
about 60 i know that was the best <laughs> 60, 65 seconds or so and we'll come back to you so oh i gotta talk to james triple still. boot hey you want to make a show like this show you can make one Streamyard. yard me slash stream yard it's a perfect place to make a live show you can have all kinds of guests did you see how we can manage all those guests it's bring your own filmmakers that's right it's not just because Steve, Derek, and Anna were amazing. It's because we have these buttons and we can push them. Watch me push one. Beep. Hey, want an audio <laughs> podcast? You can have one. Go to castos.com. They're hosting the Backpack Show. Sounds really good. I just listened to our last episode yeah. just to uh, sort of audio check it. Mm -hmm. But I accidentally listened to the whole thing because Andy Christadina and Raj, uh, Raj um, oh no. Ben Katessin. Ben Katessin. Uh, it was such a great episode. Anyway, whatever. Castos.com. So it's stupid, stupid easy. They host your audio files and syndicate them all the places. It's crazy easy. So easy. Chris does that part himself. So hey, he doesn't even make me do it. That's right. So, <laughs> hey, listen, I just bought myself. Did we lose Steve? We lost Steve Daring. Back. Hope he's coming back. Um, so I just bought a new phone. I bought the Google Pixel 5a. And did you know that PreSearch, our other favorite search engine, you could get pre-search as your primary search engine on Google devices, like on Android and everything like that. You could set your Android device to say, make pre-search my guy. You can Actually earn crypto rewards. Me. Just don't forget to log in like Chris did for the first month and a half. <clears throat> I keep forgetting to log in. I go to pre-search <laughs> all the time. And there's always just some kind of like, you know, step about me not doing this. I could be like the richest pre-search user ever. What are you pre-searching that you don't want to log in? <laughs> no, it's, it's not even like that. I always, here's what I do is I'll go to Google and I'll go, now let's check pre-search. And then I'll go there and then I'll stay on pre-search. And then the whole rest of the day, I'll have forgotten to go back and do it. So, oh, only in Europe. I'm I'm European, Kate. I'm like Irish and stuff. I think Did that's you say, it. oh, only in Europe that you have yeah. to log in? Or that you I didn't, I didn't read that part. You, that's like reading. Uh, all right. <laughs> Film let's questions. Get, let's do it. Film questions. Let's go. So I'm going to grab everybody back. Now I have to do it a different way though. You're so fussy. Steve and Derek and Anna. Tower. You're not going to put them in the same order? You're normally so fussy. They're in the exact same order. Okay. Don't you remember? Steve, Anna, Derek. No, I do. I was waiting for you to like move them all around. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, listen, guys, we have to show this video because you, uh, I don't know, you sent it to us, so we said we should do it. <laughs> um, this is an intro teaser trailer thing for Kickstarter. So what does this video have to convey like what makes this a good or a bad video besides, you know, you guys feel good about yourself. What what makes this a good video to in encourage people to give you all their loot on Kickstarter? Um, hopefully we're, we'll be able to touch uh, that feeling of, of uh, I guess, unity uh, to fight against uh, just the exclusion, you know, Hopefully, we can. The video will help you understand what we're doing and uh, why. All right. Let's see if everybody watched this for Unity. Ready? U N I T Y. Hi, my name is Derek, and I've worked in the television film industry for many years. I've worked with independent filmmakers and major studios. I've seen the imbalance, and the goal of the Open Door Film Project is to ensure that directors and executives from the underrepresented communities in film have a seat at the industry creative and decision-making table. We're here to raise money for our first feature film, Project 8. Project 8 is an anthology film composed of eight short films that are interconnected through an overarching narrative. It's the story of a woman known only as 8, who after waking up from a cryogenic sleep, finds that she is now the property of a malevolent AI entity that wishes to subject her to an experiment in order to study human emotion. Each of the short films in the anthology will serve as the emotional stimuli that the protagonist encounters throughout the experiment. Hi, I'm Anna, head of creative for the Open Door Film Project. My love for genre-related storytelling led me to development and curation for one of the biggest science fiction film websites in the world. Tapping into my network, I've been able to collect a group of extraordinary filmmakers that will be shaping Project 8. Each production within Project 8 will be handled with the care and precision typically provided by major studios, proving not only are our directors talented, but that they're more than ready to direct major feature films and TV series. Project 8 will be a deeply emotional and mind-bending work of narrative fiction, 
and we can't wait to share it with you. Check out our director's videos. I'm sure you'll love them. I'm sure you'll see how great they are. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you, and I hope we have your support. Oh, give me a little chills. Tear right here. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so I think we need to take a minute and just talk about dust. What's dust? Explain it to people. Let people understand what they're missing because they're not yet subs. By the way, look at my little sub right there. So just you know, I'm one of the 2.52 million. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, I used to work for for dust. Um it's a sci-fi short film channel, um, and we we just curated the best sci-fi short films out there um, and brought them all together. Um, found some incredible filmmakers uh, that you know, as as I said in the video, I was able to tap into to, to help us out with the open door. Um, but but yeah, it's it's just a curated um, group of of short films that that you can check out on YouTube and Facebook. Um, they also have an app, um, so you can watch it on your Roku or Apple TV. Um, yeah, it was it was an exciting thing to, to help build. I was there from from the start of it. Uh, so it's um, it's a really it's a really cool website with some incredibly talented filmmakers that that, you know, really deserve their their shot in in uh, in Hollywood. Does the industry know about projects like dust? Is it is it kind of a is there a farm league sort of system set up for this? I mean, it, it, I'm always floored by the way the film industry works because everyone's mindset about it is that you know you show up on a bus you're from idaho you know you get your waiter job or whatever and then next thing you know you're an actor and a couple of weeks later you're basically um jason momoa so yeah. then I, I think there's probably some other steps away for a while then you come back and you're jason yeah. momoa. there's yeah. steps i think but like do things like the, the, the is dust a platform like a farm league are there a bunch of those kinds of things how's that work into this and how do you now with open door film project take into that same space yeah so you know dust is an interesting uh, an interesting one because so like i said uh, you know dust is part of a uh, gunpowder and sky which is um a small studio but that, that's a small studio that's also got connections to to larger places so um you know like time warner you know funds funds uh, gunpowder and sky and and so you know it's all it's all a little interconnected kind of thing there um but dust and gunpowder and sky you know also have connections with with um like caa and other you know other places in the industry um so they're able to sort of help um facilitate uh bringing some of those filmmakers and some of those shorts to to larger places so some of the short films have been sort of launched um and are, are currently in the works of of being made into features or you know potentially series um so yeah there's there's a bunch of uh a bunch of ways that that dust sort of helps um launch filmmakers and and shorts into bigger things but um for for me you know i i made such amazing connections with those filmmakers that that i was then able to to sort of transition it into um into the open door film project and and you know uh as Derek mentioned, you know, he was such a fan of dust. So when I was able to be like, yeah, so let me talk to, to all my filmmakers here. And, and, you know, I was, I knew the ones that were, that were really, you know, like I was able to bring in a really inclusive group of, of these incredible filmmakers um, so that, that I could be like, these are, these are dust filmmakers. We know, we know the kind of talent that they have. We know the kind of uh, amazing things they can bring to the screen. Steve, when people come to this, I have this feeling in my head that they all think they're Scorsese and they all think they're Lucas and all that sort of a thing. And then uh, with the kind of budget you're throwing around over there, uh, which is some people's catering budget, um, mm. obviously they have to really come with some creative ways to make this happen. How do you help somebody not squash their vision, but get realistic about what they're going to be able to do with the tools that you can allow them to have in this, at this budget? Luckily, it's, you know, that's actually been fairly easy because a lot of the filmmakers spectacle to some of their films and to some of their stories. Oh, I was unmuted. The, their spectacle to some of the filmmakers' stories and their ideas, but at the heart, they're all telling very human stories. So there's been very little, you know, need to tone things down and to boil down the budget. You know, there's been an action sequence here or a disaster sequence there where we're like, oh, can this be a bit smaller? But for the most part, 
just whether it's taking place in a science fiction world or has like a horror twist or, or any or like a monster or a creature or anything at all, it's really just come down to telling stories about people. And that's been really easy to keep the focus on in terms of all these individual stories. Some of our projects we're doing in the uh, future, the scripts we're preparing, they also have that same focus. They're about people first and foremost, no matter what world or genre that's taking place in. And so um, luckily it's been a very small issue. We haven't had to really squash budgets or stomp on dreams or anything like that. We've just been supporting what they want to do and what they want to make. And it lines up with our vision and it just comes down to, you know, storytelling. And the strength of storytelling is always in people and characters. So after and the car chase, focus. they park real yeah. careful and get out instead of like yeah. crashing it into <laughs> something. Yeah, I get it. Janice <laughs> wants to know, do you go to writing conferences to find new writers? Or do they, they submit via your website, right? So they come to you. Yeah. yeah, they've mostly been submitting at this point, but we are looking into, you know, doing outreach and, you know, getting in the community uh, as much as we can and trying to put ourselves out there. One thing we're wrapping our head around right now is how can we run more events, attend more events, things like that. Right now, it's mostly a submission process, but in the future, we'd love to just kind of uh, hit the pavement literally and go out and find people and, you know, run our own events as well. Yeah. It's a disruptive time in the film industry. Uh, I was just reading a week or so ago that we have to really rethink the high watermark that was considered a low watermark of Christopher Nolan uh, with Tenet. So Tenet shows up for 364 million box office and everyone goes, oh, but now that we've like absorbed the whole summer, everyone's like, oh, I guess that's the number. I guess you can expect for a Nolan film, 364 million. And I was thinking about, you know, when we talk about the importance of diversity. I remember at Marvel, they were saying there's no way anyone's going to go to a mostly black cast uh, superhero movie. And then uh, Chadwick Boseman and everybody else proved them wrong. One point four billion dollars uh, early on to Black Panther. That's not the numbers anymore. What does that do for you? What does that allow? Like, what are the opportunities in we have to be smaller and, and different? And then what are the constraints or challenges that that brings? I think um, being smaller and different gives us a lot of freedom in the sense that we can give our writers and directors the opportunity to explore spaces without uh, apprehension or being afraid of uh, trying to hit a mainstream mark. Although we want to be mainstream, I think the problem is that so many people are unfamiliar with certain lifestyles. You know, I think opening people's eyes in a in a creative way, in a mainstream way, will probably cross a lot of bridges and hopefully open more opportunities for us, uh, especially if we're bringing quality uh, quality programming. Yeah, and I also just think you know there's a hunger for stories that tell different perspectives in life, no matter what the platform is right now, the theater situation, it's still readjusting. I'm a firm believer. It'll never go away completely and it'll bounce back pretty strong eventually once it's able to. And there's also kind of streaming services, you know, which is still finding its path. Like, you know, there's some big names coming out in terms of streaming platforms, but everything's still adjusting. We're still seeing where that's all going to land in the long run. And I think it just comes down to keeping an eye on, you know, how to distribute these ideas, how to get them out there to the world. And there's plenty of methods to do that. Um, what, you know, and it will come project by project, which one is appropriate for which platform, which one is appropriate for theaters, which one is appropriate for streaming. And just staying on top of that, keeping an eye on it, uh, learning as it evolves and making sure we're not stuck in the past and we're always looking forward should help us, you know, figure out how to get all these stories in front of people's mm -hmm. eyes. Because people want them. Yeah, there's a little bit, well, or a lot of gaslighting that I've seen happen where people will say things like, well, you know, I don't see a lot of representation on screen or on stage. And people are like, what? No, there's totally tons. It's just you. There's at this point, I think a little more realization that it's a real thing. Do you still run up against people saying you're exaggerating the problem? There's these stories are everywhere. I mean, I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, because the stories aren't everywhere, they do end up like, you know, they get highlighted, 
when when they're out there. And so yeah, you're you're right. You know, it it definitely there is there definitely is some pushback, but luckily we haven't experienced that uh, in. We might have experienced it in our own professional lives at different points. Well, right, that too. Yeah. So we're not going to get stories like this if we don't have a more diverse group of people in film to begin with. Yeah, and you know, I, I think uh, you know Derek and I can can both you know say that that at different points in our careers we we've definitely you know felt that kind of pushback and and you know experienced the the need for this. You know, there's there's a reason that we that we wanted this to to happen. You know, um, so like it's we haven't experienced it for open door up to this point um which is which is fantastic um but but yeah definitely you know in my own uh, professional life i've i've definitely experienced that kind of thing or 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 just the the general pushback of you know um you're working on something and then all of a sudden you get pulled off it so a white guy that that knows nothing about it can be put on so. What? Nobody's had that experience. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as as everybody was saying, with you know, all three of your experiences, kind of the the amalgam of it is so interesting to think about the way it's going, and and maybe blessedly, the last couple of years, it feels like it's accelerating towards some new opportunities. But I was thinking back to um, Catherine Bigelow, uh, Zero Dark Thirty. So she directs Zero Dark Thirty, does not get a nomination. This is like an incredible feature film about uh, what happened at the um, it, taking Os Osama bin Laden. So it's a, it's a pretty important film that a lot of people wanted to watch that dramatizes how it went down in Pakistan that night. And she got, she got pooped for it and said, well, you know, okay, maybe it was because it was controversial. Like she, she just bit the line that the PR industry stuck out there and said, what else am I going to say? I guess I'll have to pretend it's not because I'm a woman. Um, on the other hand, you know, there's there's new projects coming out all the time. No sudden move uh, with that incredible cast, you know, where guys like Benicio Del Toro are in it as sort of sideline kind of characters. But Don Cheadle is front and center. Bill Dukes plays an incredible role. There's a really rich, deep cast in that for a Netflix film. So yeah. it feels like, you know, you got to feel that excitement of this could be the time. Or do you feel like this is Lucy with the football and peanuts and they're, she's going to pull it yet again? What's the feel? Yeah. You know, that right there is that is exactly the purpose of Open Door. Uh, we don't want the even though Hollywood is changing and we are seeing more, we don't want this to be the flavor of the month. You know, oh, we'll change for a little. I've talked to people who are going into uh, diversity training at some of the large corporations. And right. I've talked to people who went to those diversity trainings and absolutely nothing happened. So I know there's a smoke screen, but we're trying to create executives, like Anna was saying, from the top down so that we have something that stays put while this door is open. You know, something that gets built and stays put so that we can keep the diversity going. Uh, so now I have a follow up question to that, because. I feel like without some extra training that you maybe normally don't have to do just to help someone make a film, you've got to teach people how not to make another blind side. Like, how do you do that? You know, it's, you said smoke screen in my head. I was being jokey and I said, woke screen, right? Like, because there's this, you know, faux wokeness that is, yeah. you know, the oat milk and Ugg boots of this current year. So how do you make it? So it's a real thing. And so that, People don't leave this one project and go, well, did my people of color thing? And then they're on to right. the next. That's, that's what I'm saying. Trying to, we're creating a production company. Okay. Behind this, this first uh, Kickstarter campaign is to create a calling card for the company. Okay. And behind it, we've got, I think, three scripts, one being looked at at a production company that wants to help fund it and find distribution for it. Uh, and we've got other scripts coming behind that that are and we're not trying to we, we're not trying to preach in our stories. We're just trying to get the inclusion in the stories so that we're represented on all levels. So we're creating a company that's going to stay while this door is open. A little tiny question, Anna, about Geek World Radio. Tell us a little bit about what that project is. Oh yeah, that's uh, it's actually something my my husband and I have done for uh, for years and years now. Um, it was a radio show. Um, we we do YouTube sometimes, um, 
and it's just it's just us being nerdy and giving our weird nerdy perspective on on pop culture and life and other things um you know a lot of talk about video games and anime and uh, all the things that that we love and are passionate about um so yeah it's it's just it's just a labor of love and uh and a whole lot of silliness on our on our youtube channel sometimes we have like our our action figures that just spin on a on a little turntable thing oh um, he's got one he's got an action figure of himself i just moved all my action figures into a box it has these ridiculous abs though <laughs> those like, are actually anatomically correct abs <laughs> Somewhere like an extra ab, they're not. There's lots. I have, of I have like eight or nine packs on there and on the you, action figure. You do. I do. I and you got a smaller waist than when I went to prom, so I feel like it's not maybe. But I don't know. Look, I'm ready to make feature films. Um, <laughs> and that says Project Eight, a calling card to build the film company, a conduit for inclusion, sustainable conduit. Interessante, they would say in another language. Steve, do you have kind of the Geek World podcast version of the for horror out there as well, or you know, do you just you just stay in your projects to stay happy? I just stay in various projects to stay happy. Um, I'm always just kind of doing things on the side, helping with all all kinds of stuff, um, making my own little goofy short films for fun, or just helping other people get their things going and their own projects going. I just like to stay busy as much as possible. <laughs> Good thing to do. Well, we've come to that part of the show where we have to uh, select our person of the day. So. Oh, and here's our person of the day. Kaboom! Um, and I have a few questions that have rolled in and out of that. And then, you know what? I'm going to give it to Elizabeth because she wanted to hero worship me. You are ridiculous. Um, that is no reason to make her person of the day. That's a great reason. It's Reward uh, sucking up. That's exactly it. That's exactly why. Chris, you can be a movie star. See? Look at that. Stop it. There'll be no living with them after this. Person of the day, awful. indeed. All right. Here's a question we've asked every guest that's ever been on the show, from Sir mix -Lot to Horacio Gar Garcia Rojas, who is in the incredible Netflix <clears throat> series uh, Diablero with Fatima Molina. That question is, what goes in your backpack? This could be something physical, like an avocado it could be something metaphorical, like hope for the future. Carrie, what's a great example of something physical someone could put in a backpack? Extra set of teeth. An extra set of teeth. That's a great one. That's what DJ um, Cumberbund told us. Is there uh, some idea of something metaphorical someone could ask to add to a backpack? I think kindness. We all need more kindness. I think kindness is a goodie. Elizabeth's okay. going to send me an apple pie. I don't know. Is that make me feel better? Yeah. You know, she used you can't text. be in the movies, but maybe just eat apple pie and be happy. There you go. <laughs> uh, like that fine warrant song. Um, okay, so let's ask the question. I'm going to start with Anna. Anna, what is something that should go in the backpack? Weirdness. Oh, weirdness. I used to joke that the um, sign language uh, word for weird was this, but it's really not. Yeah. I just thought it should be. Um, <laughs> who knows what all those little deaf kids are saying now because of you <laughs> well because this is what and then this is stupid so when I pretend I know how to sign when they start signing I just say what stupid and then they stop signing yeah. alright Steve what is something that should go in the backpack um caffeine and perseverance mm. in that order it's like that 90s song sex and candy but Caffeine and perseverance. I like it. Yeah. I'm in. Derek Williams, you fundraiser and moneymaker, you. What are you going to put in the backpack? Um, I think I, I think the word is servitude. I, I believe that because I'm sometimes people want to lead things, but I think a leader is a servant. Servant Leader is an incredible book by Robert Green something, Greenleaf something. He's a nice person. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I agree with you, and I think that's a really good one. That's a good choice. So I think uh, one other thing to say about this is that the Open Door Project is going to have probably a lot more films. Who knows? Maybe we'll pick another eight. Maybe we'll pick another 16. Yes. And they have a crowdfunding campaign that's coming up. It'll launch in a couple of weeks. And when it does, you'll hear all about it. So if you want to support Open Door Film Project, go over to their website, opendoorfilmproject.com. 
You can dig right in, find all kinds of cool things. They even have brought an artificial intelligence version of my grandmother into one of the minis. So when you see it, it's going to be kind of weird. When you see her head, it's a little off from what she looked like, but she says exactly what my grandmother would say, which is...